good Monday morning. Today we're embarking on a little thought experiment. Is a sync await really useful or is it just a uh, fluffy sugar for people that can't be bothered to learn functional programming? I am MPJ and I'm David and you are watching Fun Fun Function. <laughs> You may notice that there are two people here instead of the ordinary one person. You might recognize David from earlier episodes. Yeah, I was in the Facebook Messenger bot pair programming video and I'm also doing a lot of business stuff behind the scenes, behind the camera. Today's episode is sponsored by TipTap because they are currently hiring! If you know someone who would like to work with React Native, Yay! Node.js, in the heart of Stockholm, woo, 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 then please send them to uh, tiptap.com slash FFF. That link is also in the episode description. Is a sync await really that useless? Wait, well, I don't know really. Um, the thing is, everybody, when a sync await arrived on the scene, everyone was really, really excited about it. And finally, we can program like we used to do in the old days, synchronously. Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's kind of like the, the thing that irks me about it. It's a way of kind of hiding that things are uh, asynchronous, but not really. Um, and uh, I don't know. It, the idea behind it, and I made an, an entire episode in the, on the async await keyword, is to create write code that is asynchronous but flows like synchronous code. The thing is we already have sort of that with promises and I would just like to attack uh, async await for a little bit, like really attempt to, where for every like nice async await example out there, try to really <clears throat> write some nice promise code and see if with like how big of an improvement is this really when it comes down to it. Uh, I, I posted uh, like yesterday when recording this video, I posted a thread on the Fun Fun forum asking this same question uh, and see that, hey, can we just help each other out and try to post some examples where uh, we really try to like make a sync await shine as much as possible and then just try to rewrite that with promises as, as well we can. And people posted some really, really good stuff all right, so uh, why don't you, that isn't super familiar with this example, walk through it? All right, we have this asynchronous function, get hamburger. It takes a server and a default burger. So we'll check here, if, and then we await, the server has any hamburgers. If we don't have that, let's just return the default burger. And then we check, do we, have we eaten any burgers? And we just make an ordinary call, get number of eaten burgers today. Yeah, so that call is synchronous. That's a synchronous call. Okay. And then we check for the max burgers. So we have, we can see that, do we have a maximum number of burgers that we're allowed to eat every day? And, but we have to ask the server for that. Yeah. And that is uh, asynchronous. So we await for that. And then if we've eaten less burgers than we are allowed to, then we can, uh, as the servers to load us a burger. Yeah. And if we like- If we haven't, yeah. then we just return the default burger. Yeah. So this is, uh, of course, a silly example. Like, and it also has horrible software architecture. <laughs> uh, like, why is the get number of burgers eaten today synchronous, but the maximum number of burgers per day? It's like, it seems like it should be the inverse. But like- Yeah, Magnus, what is this? <laughs> But uh, that's not the point of this thing. Like the point is to find uh, an example where a sync await really uh, works. So uh, let's uh, let's try to look at. I, I tried to rewrite this, I, or like it wasn't just me. Like I, uh, it was a combination of the other four members and and me trying to rewrite uh, this into 
uh, it's asynchronous flow. And this is what we ended up with. We have, uh, like just like the uh, previous function, we accept the server and the default, uh, default burger. Uh, then we call uh, server has burgers, uh, which returns a, a promise, which resolves into this has burgers, um, has burgers boolean. And if it doesn't have any burgers on the server, we return the default burger. And then we, uh, uh, otherwise we revert to uh, calling get max number of burgers per day. And once we receive that, we can uh, uh, get the number of burgers today and compare that to the max burgers that we received and if we are allowed to eat more burgers today we load a uh, burger otherwise we just return the default burger as one does in enterprise grade programming so i sort of like this but it starts to feel like the whole purpose with promises was to like get out of this callback hell yeah because everything got nested, and now we're back into the nested world. Yeah, this example is chosen because it, it gives this... The, uh, the sample burger example, like, it has no nesting, because this is ex uh, these variables here are available to the entire function. We basically write a sort of a shared global state for the function, and that means that we... Uh, uh, it kind of, it becomes... Like the nesting is is not there, uh, but if we have a look in the um, uh, in the refactor, we see that we actually get a level of nesting. It's not too bad. It's just one level of nesting, really. Uh, it looks more here because I indent it so that you can uh, watch it on a tiny screen. But uh, it's it's there's still some indentation. That said, I think that I'm doing quite a bit of clever stuff here as well, which makes it more, uh, yeah. It's, uh, the, the ternary expressions is something that you I tend to fall into using uh, because it just feels cool to just have these one-liner uh, functions which use ternary expressions and then I use the ternary expressions here. Like, like, it just feels cool to do this. But if I actually just allow myself to fall out of using ternaries and allow the code to sprawl a little bit. This is the same code, except that I use uh, like these uh, multi-line functions instead and just use if statements instead of the ternaries. And now the code doesn't look all that scary. It looks pretty similar to the initial async await code. Yeah, exactly. Let me show you that again. Like suddenly it doesn't look all that scary. In fact, I think that it almost the uh, the promise example almost looks a bit even more straightforward because we like the asynchronous flow is more in your face depending on how if you, if you want that in your face or not really. But I think like a key takeaway for me when I did this was that huh a lot of the async await examples out there look often look more uh, approachable and nice because there isn't a lot of cleverness going on in them because promises tend to, for at least for me, encourage a bit of cleverness and mm -hmm. ternaries and stuff like that, which just isn't... Um, I, for me, like, 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 might look scary. But if you do it like this, it's kind of approachable. So here we have another example. We have a synchronous function, process all users. Yep. First we call the database and we wait for it. Get the users from the database. But then we want to iterate through each user and process them in some way. And we need each user's ID to do that. And then we wait for the result before we continue on. Yeah, exactly. So this processes each user sequentially. Uh, this is actually the... Um, the example that I used in the async await video to show where async await really works well uh, compared to promises. And I, uh, I do a refactoring in that video uh, where I use like a reduce to, uh, to, to create like this, this promise, uh, promise thingamabob that replaces it, which, which isn't too bad. Uh, but I kind of like to revisit it and see if we can do it even better than that. 
This is also real code from an application, sort of, uh, that I ran across uh, where we actually needed to do uh, something like this. Um, let's have a look at the refactoring I ended up with. A lot of people helped out with this as well. So if you if you're a member of the Fun Fun Forum, you should you can check out the full thread by clicking here, or that it's also linked in the episode description. So there's a lot of discussion going on around this topic and a lot of it's a fun work. topic. Yes, it turned out to be really really interesting. All right, so this is what I ended up with. Uh, my initial uh, solution for this was much worse, but Chris Collins really nailed it with these cool destructuring things. Uh, so let me walk you through this. Uh, we do the db query, just like the earlier thing, uh, but then we get a promise and the users, we pass them into this wait for each function. And we also pass in this processing function. So for each, we wait for each user to be processed here. So we call process user uh, with the user ID and that will uh, return a promise, which we will wait for and then just do processes like just like the other one. All right, so wait for each is a generic function. It's not really aware of uh, of users. It's not at all aware of users. Uh, it takes as its first argument this process function, which is this one, and as its second argument, it takes an array, uh, and it uses array destructuring here to break apart the head from the tail of the array. So uh, head will be like the first item of the array and then tail is going to be like the remaining. So it's first and remaining. Uh, uh, the remainder is an array and the yeah. item is not an array. Precisely. Okay. Hmm. And uh, let's disregard this for now uh, because that's, uh, that's on the second loop. Um, when we get the head here, we pass it to process function. And process function will process the user, return a promise, uh, which we then wait for uh, it to resolve. And then we create a new wait for each function here. We recursively call ourselves. Precisely. So we call ourselves with like the, the rest of the tail, so to speak. So we process the head and now we process the tail, which is then... Yeah, so we have all here. the users and then we like sort of just Dick, 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 cut off the head and yeah. then keep on walking downwards. Exactly. So we just, this is a very standard, uh, like, this is standard functional programming. Yeah. You saw instead of using loops, we, you use recursive functions, which like get a smaller and smaller and smaller part of our, res, uh, of our, of our result set all the time. Uh, so we cut off the head, pass down the tail, cut off the head, pass down the tail. But then we have to have an end case as well. Exactly. And that's what happens here uh, is when we when we don't have a head anymore yeah. we just poof resolve and then we're done I like this because it's pretty neat because it's recursion and I just like recursion because it just feels I don't have a word it's, it's, just... it's very I, I know exactly <sighs> what you mean it just feels good somehow yeah uh, it's it's a very satisfying way of programming it's it's a bit tricky to reason about, but it's also at its essence very simple. So like this case here, it was hard for me to figure it out, but once I have it, like the code is so simple. It's yeah. just it's like- And I love how it's, how all of, all of this, this wait for each is so, it's, it is generic. It's yeah. just, you can use it for, for anything basically. Yeah, and I feel like this is kind of like the drawback and the advantage of uh, using promises at the same time. Mm. I mentioned on the forum that uh, I felt like promises tend to encourage cleverness. Uh, and Skylar said, yeah, but you could also think about it as uh, it, they encourage you to think about your code. Oh. Uh, so, mm, um, clever. What, uh, what happens here, I, I actually found that we, we could break this apart into a generic case. So now we can use, if we have more of this kind of uh, sequential processing, we now have a generic function to do that. And probably, to be honest, in if there is a functional promise library, this function would probably be, be oh, in yeah. it so that we wouldn't have to write it. So 
promises tend to make you think about uh, composability and what can we extract, while a sink of weight tends to not quite do that because the, 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 it doesn't become quite obvious that mm, we might have some room for decoupling or extraction here. And also I think it's very, um... It's a very clear code. I always like when it's a clear code, like you understand what's going on. You return the, the query, you get the users, and then you have to process each user. You wait for them and you process them. It's just simple and clear. All right, so there's more stuff in the forum topic that I want to talk about. There's, um, uh, like there's a really, really good example of where um, async await really does well, and it's super tricky to uh, get to work, which is basically when you have multiple uh, things, like when you start like aggregating data and start, start collecting data into one thing. Um, there's also uh, error handling. That's my main topic. I love error handling. Um, like uh, promises when you need to like diverge and handle up, uh, handle stuff as you go, like the, the promises become a lot more appealing. Um, but this episode is coming up on 15 minutes or so, uh, and I think that I want to save that for next week and like cut this off and like just summarize what we talked about. Sure. So we looked at the burger example. Uh, we collect burgers and see if we have burgers on the server. And uh, the refactoring looked a little bit like this. Uh, it gave us more indentation uh, so it doesn't have the flat appeal of the async await, but it's really, it's still not uh, overly horrible to uh, to deal with. Like it's still very straightforward and easy to reason about. And especially when we broke it up and didn't, we didn't do much cleverness at all. And then we looked at this example, which uh, did sequential processing of a user. Uh, and uh, we- Which is sort of like the best case for async await, right? Yeah, like if this is the this is the typical example case of using async await. Yeah, I think that this is a very like, a lot of people use this to sell async await. I would yeah. say. And, Nothing uh, wrong with it. I like it. No, it's it's fine. I uh, like. I don't want to shit too much on async await. That's not the point of this episode. This is just <sighs> challenging, like a notion. Yeah. and see like if is this really correct like a, we there's no hate against a sync await um and this is what we ended up with uh it, which is this uh little library function uh called uh that we call wait for each this is probably in a lot of functional programming languages uh that just recursively processes uh an array and assumes that every well process uh, every call to this returns a promise and then it just keeps chaining it. Uh, and it kind of turned out okay. And again, today's episode is sponsored by TipTap and they are currently hiring. If you know someone who would like to work with React Native and Node.js in the heart of Stockholm, please send them to tiptap.com slash FFF. That link is also in the episode description. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function! I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. If you are forgetful, you can subscribe by clicking here, or you can watch another episode right now by clicking here. I am MPJ. And I'm David. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.